Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover of the Chasson Welcome 610. So as we start the motor round on the driver's side of the motorhome first, the first point you get to is your gas locker. Normally this would have a conventional 6 kilogram propane bottle in, but this customer has put the gas low system on, which is a refillable bottle. So to refill that bottle, you've got a, ref you've got a filling point here, so to bane it fitting, go to your local petrol station that sells LPG, connect, twist it so it clips onto the bane it fitting before pulling the trigger back on the filler gun to lock it onto the vehicle before pressing and holding the button on the pump until simply it stops. Once it stops, the bottle is full. Using the habitation key, which is this little black key, you can get into the locker. And you do have an 11 kilogram gas bottle on this, which is gas low. You can see on top the levels of gas, you can see that it's in the green, which means it's full. And to turn it on and off, you've got a plus and a minus on the bottle. So clockwise, anti-clockwise for off, clockwise for on on the top of the bottle there make sure this is turned off before you do start traveling so it's safer for yourselves and other road users external gas point so if you want to cook outside with a kadak bullfinch connection you will just need two jubilee clips and some rubber hosing to connect to here and the kadak so that it uses the bottle on board instead of carrying a spare bottle We've got some storage underneath the side face and bench seat there. You've got your awning and your awning light above the door. Fridge vents. External shower point. So if you've had the hot water on, obviously you will get hot water through the vehicle. But if you've just arrived, obviously hot water isn't warm. So you'll only have cold water, but you can mix it there. So you'll have a connection that connects to here again a bullfinch connection and on the other end of the hose will be a trigger gun as long as the pumps on you'll get a pressurized flow of water from this point behind the back driver's wheel you've got your waste point so this is where all your waste water goes to it goes into a separate holding tank and on the way out of your site you want to pull and let your waste water out just so that you're not carrying around the added weight of dirty water so normally it's a grate on the floor on the way out of your site. Drive as close to it, if not on top of it, and let your water out. Make sure this is fully drained off in the winter when we're experiencing colder temperatures so the water doesn't freeze. This is your cassette locker. So press the catch to open the locker door. And then to get the cassette out, lift the orange handle and slide the cassette free of the vehicle. You can either carry it or you can wheel it to your waste disposal point, which is normally beside the toilet block. Then you would remove the grid cap, press the orange button when pouring the content of the cassette out, just allows a bit of air in, stops it glugging. Tip that out. Once you've emptied it, put some water in and give it a rinse before going in with a cap full of chemical, which is 120 ml which can either be the green or the blue or if you want to just do by eye you can just put the chemical down here into the neck of the cassette but as long as you've got about 120 mil once the water starts flushing in from the toilet that will break down all your waste inside the cassette garage door on the back so in here we do have a light which is powered off the main control panel so that needs to be turned on for that to work 12 volt 240 and it is heated inside the vehicle access on the back just in case you can't get into the side for any reasons high level of brake light and above that you've got your rear view camera and on the bottom here you do have your parking distance sensors same door on the side of the garage, but on this side you do have some drop down storage shelves should you need them or you can stand them up. 
them out the way and you can store long surfboards or skis up in this locker. The hooker motor hold up, you get your hooker blade, lift the collar on the hooker blade and expose it so it's like this and connect it to the vehicle. Always connect the vehicle first before you connect the site just so that you're not walking around with a live lead. And when you come to unhook the vehicle, do it in reverse order along with pressing the blue clip down to safely remove the hooker blade from the vehicle. This locker here is known as your Technibox locker. And in here it houses your fresh water filler. So get yourself a hose pipe with some hose pipe fittings, as it's mainly just a brass top on site. Pop the hose pipe, the flat end into here, connect the other end onto the tap and fill it until it either overflows or you look on board the vehicle's control panel at the water level and think that's enough. Should you be traveling from one site to another site, you don't really need to carry water with you unless it's necessary that you go on wild camping. So you could probably carry 20 liters instead of opposed to 100 liters that this tank holds. And to get rid of the water, there's a travel drain here. So you lift this lever up along with putting the pump on and opening the tap inside the vehicle and it will drain off directly underneath the vehicle and it will drop everything until 20 litres and it will keep the last 20 litres on board the tank so it means that you're lighter on weight you're not, you, you, you've got more space for payload and you're not using as much diesel to get rid of the last 20 litres or empty it all underneath the vehicle there's a bung which I'll show you in the next clip and you've got to pull it off the pipe to drain off your fresh water in the winter when you wouldn't rise in the vehicle or if you've taken on a source of contaminated water this side you do have your so you've got your charger unit which charges your leisure battery when you're hooked up you've got your 12 volt fuses which are all listed the amperage at the top and what each fuse does so do carry some spare ones of those with you and you do have your trips and your main rcd unit so if you've tripped the vehicle out try here before you try your main site underneath the vehicle you've got to pull that bung out and that will drain off all the water when you put parking her up in the winter to avoid it from freezing and causing any damage or if you've taken on a source of contaminated water. It is just a 15 mil compression fitting. So what you can do is you can go to your local plumbing shop and get a 15 mil tap, and then you can just open the tap instead of pulling the bung off. But that is how you drain your fresh water on a chasson. When heating your water on gas, this cover needs to come off because otherwise the fumes can't exit the vehicle. So hand on the top, up in the middle, peel the cover off, Pop the cover in the passenger door pocket. If you're heating it on electric, you can leave it on. It's only when on gas to allow the fumes out. And when you come to drive off, pop that cover on and it stops behind getting dirty. Diesel filler at the top there. So it's capless on the Ford. So just pop the diesel filler in and you can fill with diesel fuel. And then underneath you do have add blue. So it'll come on the dash when the ad blue is required. It'll give you a mileage countdown of a thousand miles. Top it up as soon as that does come on. You can buy it on the pump for about 150 a litre at most petrol stations now, or you can buy it in the drums. You might want to keep one in the garage, 10 litre or five litre capacity, and pop that in. This is 19 litres this tank on a Ford to fill. Top it up as soon as it comes on, otherwise the vehicle will be on restriction mode, which is 50 miles an hour max speed. Engine batteries underneath the cab, driver's seat, and underneath the passenger seat is where your leisure battery lives. So if you ever need to get the batteries, the seats do need to come out. And then to open the bonnet on the front, which is the last thing I need to show you, using the key, pop it in the front, turn it to your left, to pop the bonnet and then to release it to your right and you've got your various fluids so you've got your coolant your screen wash your oil filler your power steering fluid and your brake fluid oil dipstick is here 
and then for giving or receiving a jump start positive here underneath the red and negative on the side of the engine lift hoist there to give or receive a jump start as the battery is underneath the cab floor so now inside the van to operate your 12 volt control panel you've got your master switch for your 12 volt here so if you turn that one on first if you are hooked up you'll get this one here which means that you're hooked up to mains 240 volt which is the green illuminated light put your master switch for your light and then they all are individually switched around the van your pump making sure that you've got enough water on board and your boiler's closed you can turn your pump on to operate your tap toilet and shower your awning light on the outside of the van so if you want to turn your light on that's the switch there and then these correspond with the buttons on the bottom so you put the one of the trailer which is your leisure battery reading take the hook about to get a true reading of your leisure battery one of the the truck which is your engine battery reading your fresh water reading here and it'll go to red once it goes into the red and it's time to refill and it'll go into the red underneath when the waste is full and it's ready to be emptied which tells you waste water is ready to be drained off as the tank is full to operate your Basto diesel heater, you need to make sure that you've got a quarter of a tank of diesel in your main engine tank or more, as it works on a different level to the main engine intake. So it means that you will never run out of diesel should you be running this for a long period of time. But to turn it on, simply turn it on. Always set it to a higher temperature first, as it allows the combustion to start. If the lights start flickering, that is normal. It's just the heater takes such a large draw of 12 volt at first to get going. And then once you're happy, you can adjust it to the temperature that you want inside of the van to be. Max is 30 degrees of heat from the Wabasto diesel heater. And you can use this when traveling to keep your back passengers warm when on the road. Go on. So above your fridge, you do have your Dometic oven and grill. So to heat your oven, or should I say your grill first, keep a hold of it until the thermocouple gets warm, otherwise it will go out like so. So keep a hold. And then, and then when you let go, it will stay lit like so. Underneath you do have your oven, that is your oven on there, so it's got a built in piezo ignition, you need to make sure that you've got your light circuit on your main control panel turned on to operate the ignition on this oven and grill. Underneath you've got your fridge freezer, so you've got a large freezer box which is separate to your fridge, and you've got a control panel in the middle. So to operate you need to turn it on here so you just press and hold and turn it on. You'll notice A is lit up and the picture of the plug's lit up which means it's on hookup but A stands for automatic energy selection. So the fridge will pick out the best source available to it at any one time on A which is automatic energy selection. So at the moment we're hooked up, so it's going to hook up, it knows not to waste gas, but we do have our test bottle on board this vehicle. So if I was to unhook the vehicle, it would switch over to gas and self-ignite. However, if I was to start the vehicle's engine, it will swap over to 12 volt, which is an ignition feed from the alternator, which is only designed to keep the fridge at the same temperature it was at when departing. So pre-chill it beforehand, Crank the engine over, it'll automatically go on to 12 volt and you'll be able to drive to your site until you either hook it back up and it goes back on the hook up or it lights on gas. But please note it waits 20 minutes before lighting on gas because if you were to pull into a petrol station and you have forgot to isolate that gas bottle, it would ignite But it, and that's not what you want in a petrol station around naked flames and fumes. So it does wait 20 minutes on lighting on gas once the engine's been knocked off if you are well camping. So what you need to do is just press this square here, turn the A off, 
and you can choose your source manually so you can light it on gas there by itself temperature here so five being the coldest one being the warmest five when pre-chilling when you do put your shopping in your fridge and freezer just turn it down to three or four maximum otherwise you can freeze the fridge and freezer this one here is your frame heater so that just allows the doors not to stick when it's on full temperature so that the rubber seal doesn't stick against the frame of the fridge and freezer and then when you're not using it turn the fridge freezer off and underneath both you've got these little wee toggles they go in there and they'll allow the door to stay ajar so that you can allow ventilation in and out of the fridge freezer so now in the kitchen area you do have three gas burner rings so you will need an ignition or a match of some sort to light your hob because it isn't a built-in ignition on this device so they do have three lit gas rings allow them to cool down so that they're cool enough to put your hand upon until you drop down your glass lid otherwise you may shatter the glass push the catches in and you've got storage in here we'll come back to the satellite system fitted to this van in a moment you've got your light which has got a switch on here sink drainer so that just sits next to the sink and allows your dishes to drain off. Plug, plugs and a cutlery tray. 240 volt socket. Large pan drawer. Making sure that you push these in before you travel to stop them from flying open and some storage underneath. Along with some handy storage down the side of the storage drawers. So to use your toilet, ensure that the pump's on and behind you've got a blue button which is your fresh water flush. So if you press it, put a small amount of water in the toilet before you use the toilet which helps lubricate the seal between the top of the cassette and the bottom of the toilet. But before you use the toilet, you'll want to ensure that you've opened the blade so the hatch doesn't get dirty. So what you need to do is open the blade which is this grey lever here, so slide that to your right. You can now use the toilet. After use, if you give it a good flush with a blue button. If you've got any pink, obviously there's nowhere for the pink to go because it isn't a separate header tank on a motorhome. It's fed off the main fresh water tank. So what you can do is dilute the pink with some water into an empty spray bottle, spray the bowl, give it a flush, and then close the blade once you've used the toilet this will ensure that when the cassette is full which will indicate on the back here with three green lights underneath the diagram of the cassette here you'll be able to pull the cassette straight out the side of the van and empty it if the blade this handle was to be left open the cassette won't come out the outside of the van because it's locked into place so you've got to make sure that this is closed to get the cassette out bathroom light is on the side of the sink unit Got a toiletry cabinet there, some there, and some here with a hanging reel for your towels. Just your hot water. The so water is getting up the temperature there as it is hot. That's your hot water system working as it should. Behind the large mirrors, you do have. A wardrobe with shelving. This is your infill cushion for the lounge, which I'll show you how that makes up out of the sofas and the table into a bed. As your second double bed. Ensuring that your shower screens are tied back before you travel. Ensure that when you are winterizing, you take off your shower head from the hose. Just unscrew it from the hose and lie this hose in the tray with the mixer taps of all taps left open just to ensure that any water inside the, the taps and pipelines behind the furniture drains out and nothing stays and freezes. Hanging reel for towels or coats if you've been caught in the rain hang them and they'll drip dry in here and open 
This skylight you just wind the skylight open, but ensure all skylights and windows are closed before you do start travelling again. So directly behind your passenger seat, if you remove the cushions in your lounge, this is the location of your boiler. So your boiler provides hot air as well as heating the water, which is a 10 litre water container in the boiler. So to drain the boiler off in the winter when you're not using the van and we're experiencing colder temperatures that could potentially freeze the water, what you need to do is you need to drain it off. And to drain it off, there's a little board that goes in here, so take that off. And you want to flick this yellow tab up and stand it up on end. Leave it stood up on end during the time you've got the vehicle not in use and leave all the taps within the van open. So, kitchen tap, disconnect your shower head from your shower hose and lie that down in the shower tray just so any water can't coil up in the pipe and drains out. Hand basin tap, you'd open your fresh water drain off point and your waste and then make sure all the water is not sitting in the van because it will freeze in colder temperatures. When you come to reuse it, lie your tap down, put your cap back on your fresh, shut your waist, shut all your taps, fill the vehicle with water, cold water. Once you've got cold water on board, you can come in and put your control panel on and turn your pump on. Cold water on the cold side of the tap will automatically come through pressurised because it's drawn it from the main tank. As soon as you start going to the hot side, this is when it starts transferring the water from the cold water tank into the hot water tank, which is your boiler, and it'll cough and splutter because it's filling it with 10 litres of water in here until it's pressurised and you get a free flow of water from the hot side of the tap. You've got a pressurised water system on the hot water side. Once you've done one tap, do them all. But just remember, drain your boilers down in the winter because they're not covered under warranty. It's your responsibility to winterise your vehicle. And to do so, you'd lift that tap up and leave it stood up during the time you've not got the vehicle in use. So I've just been showing you a boiler, which is under here. So on the front of the seats, you do have your two controls. We've so got your Truma boiler on gas and your Truma boiler on electric. So gas, you've got to remove the cover on the side of the vehicle, just beside the passenger door to work. Otherwise, what will happen is the gas won't work because the fumes for the heater will not be allowed to escape the vehicle. So it's a fail safe and it'll come up with a red light, meaning it's failed just because the emissions can't leave the vehicle. So to do the gas, you've got two settings. You've got 50 degrees. And you've got 70 degrees of heat in your water, depending on what temperature you want. And to do the electric, you've got 750 watts at the top. Or you've got the bigger output at the bottom, which is which is 1850. You can use the gas and electric together if you're in desperate need of heating your water. And this will heat your water in around 10 minutes. But if you are on a site, just use your electric. And if you are while camping, you would just have to use your gas, as you wouldn't have any electric there. To operate your electric drop down bed, make sure the lights are turned on on the panel. So this button here, which will power the bed as well. So you've got to have the light circuit on as it's fed to the bed motor. Turn on the key, press and hold, and you'll be able to bring the bed down. You can let go and stop it at any height. So if you were using it as a four berth, ladder clips on and you can make downstairs into a bed or you can bring it down lower but you will have to remove the backrests from the sofas below make sure you take your pillows off when st when storing the bed back up and when in the winter we're not using it i always think it's a good idea to leave the bed lower just so it allows the air to circulate on top of the mattress To operate your table, which is on a telescopic electric drop-down leg, place your key in here, and instead of turning the key, turn the front of the barrel. So you bring the table down.
and then when forming the bed you'd pull the extension support out which you'd use if you were dining as well turn the table over place it in here like so there's two little leg supports which slide out and just hold one side of the table so we'll lift the velcro off them slide them forward just helps distribute the weight on this side of the table and then you would put your infill cushions on top i'll show you how your infill cushions go in the next clip but that's how you'd form the infill for the bed out of your sofas